Hi, I'm Brooke Boyd with OpenCrowd. Today we're going to walk through OpenCrowd's 360 View Dashboard, which is our approach to designing and developing the next generation dashboard. We highlight five capabilities, visualization, analytics, collaboration, smart search, and mobile capabilities. Now you may have some or all of these components already in your enterprise, and that's fine. What we're going to highlight is the way that our framework will seamlessly integrate these functions for increased productivity. And without further ado, let's walk through the demo. So now we're going to walk through the 360 view demo. So what you're seeing in front of you is an overview or otherwise known as the landing page of the dashboard. On the left hand side is my calendar, which can be pulling from an external CRM or it can be functioning as my existing CRM. So the first thing that I'm going to check is what do I have coming up for today so that I can prepare. And immediately it jumps out that I have a meeting with Beacon Trust. Now over on the right hand side is my alerts panel. And what that tells me is what's going on with my clients that I need to be aware of right away. And the correlation that I see is that we have an alert that relates to Beacon Trust. And I've already sent out my colleague in my, on my behalf to the Beacon Trust quarterly account review meeting. So what I need to do is I want to hover over and figure out exactly what this alert relates to with regards to Beacon Trust. So I see that it has to do with an energy sector allocation um, being exceeded. This could also um, potentially trigger a workflow if you want there to be some you know, other lead-ins here. But for me, I want to now dig into Beacon Trust and take a closer look to make sure that the allocation has in fact been exceeded and then determine what action needs to be taken. So now I'm in the client overview section. So I've now moved away from the landing page of the dashboard into a client specific page. On the top left hand side is the alerts. And what I want to do is now go down and take a look in my knowledge repository, which is going to pull in documents from other systems like SharePoint. Um, if I click on research here, for the sake of this walkthrough, we're going to pretend that the first prospectus here relates back to um, target allocations. So if I click on the document, it'll take me into the knowledge repository where I can zoom into the actual prospectus and find the language that relates to the target allocations and therefore verify that it has in fact been exceeded. The next thing that I want to do is pull my team together to then collaborate on how to take action. So now that I've closed out of my document, I want to jump in to collaborate with my team. Now, what we're moving into is real-time collaboration, which is allowing me to instantaneously share and discuss documents through chat and video, as well as real-time whiteboarding, which is what we're going to walk through right now. So I'm going to invite my colleague Prashant so that he can jump in and that we can have a quick discussion with regards to this client and determine what action needs to be taken. So I've launched a workspace, in, which includes for this purpose a graph that relates to my client, and I'm going to send an invite to Prashant. Now if Prashant is not in the dashboard, he will still receive a notification to his inbox of his email prompting him to log in so that you can connect with anyone regardless of whether they're in the dashboard at the time. So you'll see that I have popped up at the bottom of the screen, I have invited Prashant um, he's received notification that I would like to chat with him on Beacon Trust. And we can start talking via video as well as chatting and you'll see notice on the right hand side I'm putting in some IMs. Um, and so what we're looking at right now is this is the context-based collaboration. So keep in mind that if you have other systems, what we are looking at here, all of this is the chat, the video, and the comments as well as the real-time whiteboarding are all going to be searchable and referenceable at a later date. So if we're talking about this target allocation having been exceeded, you'll notice that Prashant has the ability to draw as well as I do or anyone else participating in this whiteboard on the white onto the graph to make sure that we're you know, looking at the same areas and put in commentary as well as uh, drawings. And all of this will be saved in this workspace so that we can reference that later. Um, for any colleagues who are not accessing or invited to participate in the chat, they want to come in, they can leave comments as well that will be saved to this workspace. So back to the story that we're telling with regards to this target allocation having been exceeded, um, we've decided that we need to rebalance the portfolio. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save the workspace with the dialogue base, you know, and kind of the outcome and next moves. And I'm going to save and post that so that when my colleague gets um, off the subway, he's going to receive on his iPad a notification that will contain this workspace so that he can see what the issue was, what the next steps are, how it's being handled, and therefore get in front of it if he needs to with the client. So now with the fire put out with regards to Beacon Trust, I want to dig deeper to see if this is an isolated issue or recurring. So I move over to analytics and here, because I'm focused on interactions, I want to uncheck all the interactions with the exception of alerts because that's what I'm focused on. I've been aware of Beacon Trust issues, but what I was not aware of was the fact that Strand Estate has also an you know, increasing number of alerts. So you'll notice that at the bottom of the screen, I can see all of my clients listed. And then when with Strand Estate, when I click on them, I can drill down further. And what you'll see at the bottom is that the data changes from being a list of my clients to a chronological time frame, so that I can drill even further into see whether the alerts are an issue for Strand Estate or not. So by unchecking, I could bend, I can you know, focus on the areas that I want, the interactions that are relevant to me, in this case it's alerts. Um, I could also benchmark them against other clients in my portfolio based on certain criteria like interactions to see how they compare. So the outcome here is the fact that we have four alerts, but they seem to have been spread out over a period of time and therefore no cause for alarm. Uh, this screen can also be very important in terms of adding a collaboration button so that senior management can do forecasting or reporting based on overall client portfolios. So what we've looked at here was a light OLAP cube and analytics and visualization. Now we're going to move on to the smart search capabilities. And you'll see that there is a search box at the top of the screen. So what smart search is going to enable me to do is anticipate the type of information that I might be looking for and, there, and then categorize that information. So if I'm watching the news and breaking news comes on with regards to Japan, what immediately comes to mind is the fact that I want to know which of my clients may be affected by anything occurring in Japan. So by typing in the word Japan, you'll see that I automatically get a breakdown of buckets for client, fund, and interaction. Now these can be customized to whatever your needs are for my specific um, workload. This is the way it's broken out for me. Uh, but the point is that you can have that broken out so you can then uh, filter very quickly. So if I head into more results at the bottom of the page, I'm now going to get the full list of results for typing in the word Japan. So on the right hand side you'll see these are the suggested answers. So maybe I'm looking for clients with assets under management or client interactions or funds of assets under management. These are all based on the keyword that I've typed in helping to guide me to areas that might be helpful. In the middle, you'll see that the keyword that I've done the search for is highlighted, and these are the full results. So this is going to capture anything that would include Japan. Everything from documents, clients, to interactions like uh, chat and workspaces. On the left-hand side is the faceted search results. So you'll see that under client, we have a drop-down where it says seven, which is telling me that seven of my clients have items that relate to Japan. So Beacon Trust, for example, has eight items, whereas Osborne Partners only has two. Now, if I want to drill down even further, I can go into interactions, where it's telling me that we have very 17 interactions that relate to Japan. What those interactions are are seven reports, um, to you know, six periods of news, or six news articles, to collaborations or workspaces. Um, now, if I didn't know what I was looking for, I could also do, you know, I could show more related, I could do a fuzzy search, but that's also just to kind of lead you and enable you to do additional drill downs. Now I'm going to quickly show you how you can access information natively via iOS or Android platforms. So for purposes of this demo, we are running the iPad app on a simulator so that you can see what the look and feel is. Uh, you'll notice that the iPad that you're looking at, the screen, the overview screen, is the same as it appears on the desktop. Now if I drill into the client, I will see that my alerts pop up the same way that they had on the desktop, but what I have here is the native capability of being able to pinch and zoom on the graph, 
where I can drag and drop information. I can hone in on various uh, red flags, which are alerts and can be articles um, or documents or things that might relate specifically back to my clients. Um, another native experience you can have is under the knowledge repository. We can click on a document and have it pop up, but these documents can also sync on and offline so that if you have um, latest versions of documents, they will appear on the iPad. If you want to have comments, notes, all of those will sync back to your CRM system so that you don't have to rekey the information when you get back to the office. Um, the other native experience is the geolocation capability. So when I have come up uh, off the subway and I want to find out where my meeting is, instead of just clicking and seeing that I have a meeting, I actually can click on the button and it will give me the geolocation so I know exactly where to locate the meeting. Um, and then lastly, you'll see that we have the same search capabilities that you do on the desktop. Now I'll quickly highlight the search capabilities on the iPad. You'll remember in, on the desktop I did a search using the keyword Japan. So if I type in Japan on the iPad, you'll see that I still have the ability to consolidate and access this information on my clients, funds, and interactions now in a single location on my iPad. So in summation, just to recap what we walked through today, the five key capabilities that we believe are required for dashboard applications are visualization for insight at a glance, analytics to discover and analyze, smart search to aggregate and correlate information from disparate data sources, collaboration to enable real-time decisions, and lastly, mobile to access via multiple devices. To learn more, please contact us at sales at opencrowd.com. Thanks and have a great day.